first trip to Death Valley was an experience to say the least. A few days before the trip, I punched the words Death Valley into the weather app on my phone and everything looked great, so I naively drove to the park. I still don't know where that app was getting its info because despite being only April, it was already 100 degrees in the park every day. A full 30 degrees higher than the app had forecasted and higher than I had packed clothes and gear for. Then, only hours after arriving in the park, I blew the radiator in my car, attempting to climb up the mountain on the way to Panamint Springs, which left me disabled and stranded in the park with no option but to call a friend for help. The only images I took were those I could get on foot from around my campsite. I spent the rest of the time filming my first video ever. Two days later, I drove away with the car fixed and my tail tucked. I knew I had to go back for a redo. I'd seen enough of the park to understand how vast, harsh, and inhospitable it is, but there's something else there too. The best words I can think of to describe the park are beautifully desolate. Not sure if those words fit better describing the physical features of the park or the emotional feeling of being there. Regardless, seven days in the park is an experience by any account, and one that I'm definitely eager to repeat. And I still have a ton of unfinished business in that park. I'm back in Death Valley National Park. I've driven myself out to some sand dunes. Um, you can see in the background right about there is where we're about to head. About an hour and a half away from sundown. Um, and I've never been in this location, so I think uh, without talking too much, I'm just gonna grab my camera gear and start heading up and see if I can find a composition before the sun gets too low. So, here we go. Today is December 8, 2018. It's a Saturday. Uh, with any luck, as long as all goes well, this should be about a six or seven day trip. Today is day one. This seems rushed, because it is. So one of the challenges I'm dealing with here is that I'm not the only one here. Uh, it looks like there might be two other cars and more people walking up. So what that means is there's footprints on the dunes. And I'm leaving footprints too. So, so that means every step I take is potentially ruining a composition. Uh, so I gotta be really careful. And that's, that's, that's hard to do. So, and that's fine. There's enough dunes here. I could probably make something work. I'm just pressed for time because the sun's getting really low. Uh, so if I don't hurry up and get set up, I'm not gonna get anything. So I'm kind of walking towards one that looks the most promising, but it's kind of a Hail Mary pass. Hopefully it works. If not, then I guess I'm done for the night, but I'm gonna walk up this ridge line here and see if I can get set up, see if it looks like anything I can shoot. Um, and with any luck, I won't trample my own composition, so. I didn't know there was a mine here. Maybe tomorrow when uh, the sun's high and harsh and I'm just scoping around, maybe I'll check that out. That was disappointing as it might be. Um, there's just not much I can do. Uh, I got here too late and didn't have time to really explore and try to line things up into a composition. Um, it's a lot harder than it looks to find something balanced anyway, you know. 
uh, as opposed to just shooting a big wall of sand, which is cool in its own right too, but it doesn't make for much of an interesting photograph. Not for what I had in mind anyway. Although I did get a pretty cool light show. Uh, that was pretty neat. The, the light looks really good running up the side of the dunes, uh, right in the golden hour. Um, it just doesn't last very long. And it was pretty fleeting. I knew it was when I walked up. I didn't have much time, so that's okay. Um, i head back to the truck now. I did potentially find a couple dunes I want to check out in the morning. Disappointing thing is, I'm probably just not going to be able to set up in time to shoot morning light either. Because uh, I'll need a light in order to try to find a composition. But that's alright. I think... I just had a thought. So, I didn't really find anything to frame up and shoot without footprints, but that doesn't mean that I can't frame it as a silhouette for night photography. So, maybe I'll try that. Last night was a full moon. Um, tonight, I think, is a waxing crescent, 1% or something like that. Um, I left my phone in the truck, so I don't know what time the moon sets, but there isn't gonna be much of one. I have my eye on one dune that might work. Uh, it is right there. It'll be a wide shot, that's okay. I'm not gonna try to climb up the ridge. I don't wanna destroy it in case it's good for another shot later. It's really challenging to not trample all over everything. Uh, but I might shoot low, use the ridge of this dune as the foreground as a silhouette shot and try to get the stars because it's really clear uh, all around the dune right now. The sky is actually really clear everywhere except for where the sun's setting. There's just some high clouds that look pretty cool but you can't. it's pretty obstructed so you don't see much. I gotta try to figure out which direction I parked my truck because it's really small on the horizon right now and if I walked the wrong direction it could be like a long ways off. <laughs> so I'm staying here. Um, it's a long drive to get back to any campgrounds so um, and it's about a mile and a half trek back to the road. I do have a headlamp, that's fine. But tonight I'm going to be calling the bivy sack my tent. So that means I can also get up in the morning and be on location and try to get out here a little bit before sunrise. Uh, try to use ambient light to see if I can find something, although I'm not expecting much. I'm probably going to need the daylight to try to find a composition. I mean, I got a couple days, so I'm okay with killing a couple if I can get a, an ideal shot. I think I'm just going to set up and see what I can frame before I lose all my light. So I went ahead and framed up a shot of this dune here. Um, vertical composition so I can put emphasis on the sky and then crop out the stuff on the right and left that I don't want. What I did was I stopped all the way down to F18 to try to get as much sharpness as I could um, throughout and took a series of foreground images that gave me a shutter speed of about 10 seconds. So the idea there being that it gives me just a couple more options. Um, silhouetting it might be cool, but in case I want some foreground too, no, I got it. So now I'll leave my tripod exactly where it is until I start to get some starlight, and then we'll stop all the way up to 2.8 and set our ISO as high as it needs to go to get some sharp stars. So. Um, it looks like I am set up and ready to go. I'm just gonna hang out here, wait for it to get even darker past twilight, so. That was interesting. It's really quiet out here. It's actually kind of creepy and you hear a couple of noises and it's probably just a hawk or an owl or something like that, but it's kind of freaky. <laughs> Notable settings. Uh, first off, I'm using mirror lockup mode. So that locks your mirror up out of the way so that it doesn't shake the camera body when it goes to take the picture. Uh, I'm also using a two second timer. So it'll lock the mirror up. You'll hear it go click first and then it'll beep for two seconds and then take the photo, which is kind of might throw you off a little bit if you've never used that before. It's all in an effort to not shake the camera as much as possible, or it's an effort to shake the camera as little as possible, I should say. And then on top of that, uh, I have long exposure noise reduction turned on. That's that's a new one for me. I'm going to try that out and see how that turns out. Uh, it takes a little longer to write to the card so you don't see your preview right away because it's processing. Uh, but so far it looks like a ISO 3200 is working pretty well with this composition. Um, 
probably gonna have to boost that a little bit more as it gets darker though so I can get more and more of the stars. Um, and it is getting pretty dark so I'm gonna keep shooting here, um, keep trying out settings and yeah, we'll see if I get anything. Well, I made it back to the truck, which was kind of, kind of sketch in the dark. It, uh, I almost missed the road and I would have just kept walking towards the other mountain range and missed the truck. So just a tip there, should have probably had a little GPS or something. But now I am back at the truck. I'm going to probably cook some food, start rolling the bivy sack out because that is where I'm staying tonight. And then maybe I'll do some stargazing, kill some time since it's only like 7.30 right now. It's probably another hour or two before I'm ready to really call it a night. We'll see uh, what happens in the morning. Um, I don't have anything to shoot. I don't have anything picked out. I don't even know where I'm going because I didn't get enough time to really scope the area. But um, could stick around for another day or two here and get a shot or two if I can find a composition I like. Otherwise, there are other dunes. Um, it's just some of the more popular ones are for sure going to be trampled. So um, if there's any potential to get a shot here, I'd like to. Um, especially since it's the particular set of dunes I'm at right now are kind of way out of the way. So I don't really want to have to make another trip back here. Um, this trip anyway. Well, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow. If I strike out, maybe we'll pack up and move on to another location. Otherwise, um, I have a few days. So um, I'd like to get that ideal dune crest shot that uh, you see so many of out there. But I don't have one for my portfolio, so it'd be nice to have. Uh, but yeah, I think it's uh, food time and then I'm gonna tuck in and crawl in the sleeping bag and maybe try to get some sleep. So, see you in the morning.